spend a lot of time building programs, preparing tenders, talking to our customers, understanding their problems. How we transfer that knowledge to our site teams to deliver is a critical part of the construction process. And we often beat ourselves up for not transferring all the information, or the right information and the critical information. But it goes much, much further than that. It's not just between the estimating department and the delivery team. It goes down to every hour and every day. It's about how our site managers communicate with our operatives on site and how our operatives on site share what they're doing and coordinate their own efforts so that everybody in the chain is taking responsibility for planning and sequencing themselves effectively. When materials arrive at site, let's assume they turn up on time and when we need them. But using those materials effectively so we don't waste them is critical. Making sure we haven't overdug and we're using more stone. That our trenches haven't collapsed. That when we tip it on the ground it's in a gathered position, it's not contaminated. And when we take the packaging off that we make sure it's recycled and it goes in the right skip and it can go off site to somewhere that's a appropriately permitted to deal with that issue. So we drive down the final amount that we discard. But it is critical that when we place that material, it's placed in the right place and used appropriately and it's checked on the way in and it's checked where it's used. Weather affects everything we do in civil engineering. Coastal defence, flood defence, buildings and structures, new railways, new motorways, new buildings, the weather has an influence, whether we can crane today because of the wind or whether we're flooded tomorrow because of the rainfall. At Land and Water, our health, safety, quality and environment team now send out weather bulletins to help us plan. Please use weather bulletins to look ahead and plan your work. Windage tomorrow means we can't pile with that large crane and heavy rainfall means we might not be able to complete our earthworks. I'm astounded how few people seem to understand the importance of sealing up their work at the end of a shift to, to defend ourselves from weather. A rut that's 100 millimetres deep takes 10 times longer to dry out than an area that's been smoothed off and sealed when there's only 10 millimetres of water because evaporation on a hot warm day is about 10 mil a day. So why do we leave ruts open to fill with water and generate slurry and make our lives more difficult? It's simple, just seal it up. That's about thinking ahead, reading the weather and driving out wastage. Another example of weather related wastage, I'm going to show you an image of a barge of ours that rolled over. It rolled over because we had a high rainfall event at the weekend and nobody on a Friday had bothered to check the forecast for freak storms and leave the ropes loose to allow the barge to move on its mooring. So when the river came up, it pulled hard on its ropes, became dislodged, it rolled over, over a weir, costing more than £125,000 in recovery costs and embarrassment for our business because we didn't read the weather. Let's read the weather in advance, let's work with the weather and stop the wastage. So today we're out on site at our dredging and restoration project at Blenheim Palace. And here we're dredging the Great Lakes behind us that were built in 1763 by Capability Brown. And we're dredging them because they've become eutrophic. That's over, over levels of nitrates and phosphates coming down the River Glyne from the treatment works, ultimately coming from washing powders and soaps put in and farming, putting inputs into the sewage farm and the river. And it's caused the lake to deteriorate to the point where it's compromised its habitat status. So we're restoring the lake and it'll be able to use for generations in the future. We think it's the largest inland dredging project by volume ever and I'm going to introduce you now to Charlie Oakes who's just going to talk to you a little bit about how we're finding wastage in our own work here and what we're doing to drive it out. Hi my name's Charlie and I'm project manager here at Blenheim Palace responsible for overall delivery of this project. In the early stages of the project we had to carry out some enabling roads, putting in a road and putting in some wharfs. Putting in the wharfs raises a prime example of driving out wastage through design and early consultation. It was only during the construction phase of the wharfs that we discovered the build a buildability issue thanks to the ground conditions. Whilst we were able to brainstorm this on site and come up with a working plan that 
was safe and successful, I wasn't at all happy with the wastage of time that had occurred. So in talking to the technical department, we've redesigned the process that hands over the designs. And now we're going to have a half an hour discussion on buildability to eliminate the wastage of time. So here at Blenheim, we're trying to drive out wastage by having a design done of the lake and then using global positioning systems on the dredges to get it right first time and not have to redo work. To do this, we had the entire lake surveyed, which I've divided into, into grids and vo volumes within each grid point. Every excavator that's dredging has a GPS system on it, so they can work within the grids I know exactly how much they're supposed to dredge out of it and we can measure we can measure what's actually coming out of it. This gives us total control of where we where we are and where we're going, allowing me to run budgets and get it right first time, eliminating the wastage of having to return and redo sections again. So I'm here with Simon Perry, who's our site manager here at Blending Palace, and Simon's going to talk a little bit about how we drive out wastage by trying to do things right first time and not having to do them a second time, which is exactly what we're doing right now. Over to you, Simon. As you see behind us, we're having to retrim the whole road because the operator who put it in firstly uh, was not able to be bothered to take the time to do it properly and this is now costing us a lot of time, effort and money. And the message here is about responsibility. If we're being paid to do a job, let's do it to the best of our ability and do it right first time. 